A very good afternoon to you all. And we start with the lecture number seven in Python series. In lecture number six, we talked about the for loop in Python. And I told you how for loop can be used to generate a table of any given number or also to generate a number series, right? And now we talk of how for loops can be used to analyze uh, strings as also lists, right? So string is going to be a single data point and list is going to be multiple data points organized into a data structure called list. So, and in case you're not clear with what a string is or what a list is, you can go back to previous lectures. It is always advisable to be clear with what has been done before, before you move on to the next steps. So in case you're not clear with the list and the string concept, please go back to the previous lectures and have a review. So let's get started and we talk of the loops here. So loops are basically functions in all programming languages to perform action iteratively or to perform it multiple times, right? Uh, there are two main types of loops that we normally deal with, the for loop and the while loop. While loop is very similar conceptually to for loop, except that uh, you have to mention the condition where the loop has to stop, right? So we'll discuss the while loop later. For now, we discuss the for loop here. So here you are, let's uh, get back to some revision of what we've done in the last lecture. So we generate a number series here from one to 10. So if you remember from the previous lecture, uh, the syntax for doing this is to take a for loop. So you say for i in range one to 11. So if you're going to generate numbers from one to 10, the actual range that has to be given is n plus one. And then you end up with a colon signifying that this is a for statement here. And when you're using an editor uh, for Python or uh, uh, Google Colab, automatically when you press enter here, you will come to a indented space here, right? So this is your indentation. So indentation indicates that this is part of the for loop and has to be repeated multiple times. And here again, you simply mention print and the argument to print is i. So i will have initial value of one, then it will have a value of two, then three, then four, it will get incremented by one every cycle until the 10th cycle, right? Where it is going to stop. So when you run this now, this is what you get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So this is running 10 times and basically the value of i keeps incrementing by one for every cycle of the loop, okay? So now we move on and we talk of uh, how strings and for loops can be combined for analysis of sequence. So here we are, we declare a biological sequence that is DNA and DNA equals to N double quotes GAATTC. And those of you who are keen biologists would know that this is the recognition sequence for E coR1 restriction enzyme. Right? And then again, we put it to loop. So instead of giving a numerical index here, we directly give the name of the string that we want to analyze here. So we say for I in DNA, right? So this loop is going to run exactly as many times as the number of characters in the string. So here there are six characters. It is going to run six times. How do you find out how many characters are there in the string? You can say L-E-N-G-T-H equals to L-E-N and DNA, right? So, and then of course you could print the length DNA. So you say print and L-E-N print GTH. So here you are, you're basically running it as many times as the number of characters in the string. So this is going to be six. And the value of I would be initially the first character of the string, then the second character of the string, then the third character until the sixth character of the string, right? So you run this here and you, the length of the uh, sequence is six. And then of course, uh, when the loop runs for the first time, the value of I is G. The second time the A, the third time A again the fourth time T, the fifth time T, and the sixth time C. So basically, uh, you are accessing the individual characters in the string one by one when you put it into a for loop, right? 
So now that you know that you can access the individual characters in a string, you also want to check whether the individual character is a purine or a pyrimidine and accordingly print the nature of that particular character. So here you are, uh, you refine another DNA molecule. So you say DNA equals to AATTGGCC. So this is a string here. So we put the DNA sequence into the loop again. So we say for I in DNA and colon. So basically individual nucleotides in this DNA sequence will be accessed one at a time. And then, of course, you're also checking for whether the current nucleotide is a purine or a pyrimidine, right? So you put up a condition if I double equals to G or I double equals to A. Double equals to means you're checking for the equality between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. So if the current value that is held in I is same as G or it is the same as add an N, then in that case, print I and also print along with it purine because this is going to be a purine. If it is A or G, it is a purine, adenogonin. And taking by default that there is no other character in a DNA sequence, you can directly say if it is not a purine, it has to be a pyrimidine. So you directly say L and colon, print I in double quotes pyrimidine. Right? Uh, so when you run this part now, here is what you have. The first uh, nucleotide is an adenine, which is a purine. The second nucleotide, again, is an adenine, a purine. The third nucleotide is a thymine, a pyrimidine. The fourth nucleotide is a thymine, a pyrimidine again. Then the fifth and sixth are purines again, and then seventh and eighth are pyrimidines again. So this is how you can analyze individual characters in a string and also classify them based on certain criteria. In this case, you're classifying them into purines or pyrimidines, depending on what is the nucleotide at that particular uh, position. So let's say you also want to count the total number of purines and pyrimidines in your sequence. So let's start again. And first we initiate the counters to purine equals to zero and pyrimidine equals to zero, which means that the value that you are assigning to purine is zero initially. Likewise, the value that you assign to pyrimidine is zero. So single equal to is assignment, double equal to is checking for equality, right? That you must remember now. Then we move on and we declare a sequence here. So we say DNA equals to GAATTC and followed by four adenines again. So this is again a 10 nucleotide sequence that we're giving. You could also take input from the user. And if you want to see how it is taken, you can go back to the previous lecture and see how user can give input uh, through the console, right? So here we are, we declare a DNA, DNA equals to GAATTC. A, 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 which is four A's together. Then we start our loop again. We say for I in DNA. So now your loop is going to run 10 times. And each time the value of I is going to change depending on what is the cycle that is there. So in the first cycle, the value of I will be going in. Second cycle, add in. Third cycle, add in. Fourth cycle, time in. Fifth cycle, time in. So on and so forth. Tenth cycle, it will be added in, right? And again, you are checking if I equals to guanine or I equals to adenine. And if it does, you are printing that this is a purine. And also you are incrementing the counter by one. So you say purine plus equals to one, which means every time you encounter a G or A as the value of I, you are incrementing your counter by one. And if it is not, then of course it is understood that this is a pyrimidine. Then in that case, you are incrementing the pyrimidine counter by plus one, right? And um, if you see here, indentation is important. Everything is happening inside the for loop statement. So which means these are all part of the for loop and will be uh, done multiple times, right? So this is uh, as many times as the loop runs. Once you're done with your loops, now you are printing the total number of purines and total number of pyrimidines, which is now outside the loop. So the indentation is now at the same as the for statement, which means now your loop has ended, right? So here you are, you say print, and in round brackets and in double quotes, total purines equals two, close the uh, double quote, comma, and then the purine, which is this value here, purine, the counter that is used for counting the number of purines. And then again, you put a comma and then you say total pyrimidines equals two, and then close the round brackets and the comma, and then you say, this is pyrimidine, right? This is again, the counter that we've used here, initially in initiated to zero and then incremented by one every time a match was found. So now let's run this part and uh, uh, see what we get. So here you are, you run this, and here you are, right? So you say G is purine, 
adenine is also purine, adenine is also purine, then you have you have three pyrimidines and the remaining of the remaining 10 all are purine. So which means there are seven purines, as you can see here, seven purines and three pyrimidines. Right? So this is how you can analyze your string again and categorize it into certain classes based on the individual nature of the individual characters in the string uh, and also do some calculations for the composition of the string. Right. So up till now, we had been seeing how you can analyze strings using loops. Now we move on to a list. So list, you know, is a collection of data points. So therefore, uh, how do you declare a list? I'm sure you would know. If you don't know, again, go back to lecture number two or three and refer back how list can be declared and what are the various uh, functions that are associated with list. One of the functions that is append is what we're going to use here as well, right? So here you are, you declare a list. So the way you declare a list is you say list one equals two, and then in square brackets, you mention the elements that you want to declare within double quotes. So this is DNA, comma RNA, comma proteins, and these are all characters. So they're all in double quotes, right? And then you close your uh, square bracket here. So this is your list one. So now let's say I want to access all elements in the list. So I can put up a for loop here. So I say for i in list one. List one is the name of my list. So for i in list one, and I can say print i. So I will initially have a value of DNA. Then in the next cycle, it will have the value of RNA. And then in the third cycle, it will have a value of protein. So when you run this, you get the output, expected output here. This is your DNA, RNA, and protein, right? Then let's say we also declare a second list in which we are mentioning the processes of the central dogma. So we say list two equals two, and then we open the square brackets and we say in double quotes replication, comma transcription, comma translation. So this is your second list, and you could run it so that uh, you have values in list two. So let's say you want to print the corresponding elements of the two lists in one single line, right? So here you are. So basically what you want to do is you want to print DNA and replication together, RNA and transcription together, and protein and translocation together. So if you see the indexes are corresponding, this is the zeroth position in list one. This is also the zeroth position in list two, right? So the index in list one and list two are corresponding. To print the corresponding values in list one and list two together in one single line, what we do is we start a loop first. We say for i in range three, because we know that the number of elements in each of these lists is three. So we say for i in range three, and this will allow i to take values of zero, one, and two, right? And then we basically print the elements of the list one and list two by giving the index. The index is indicated by the value that I holds at that particular cycle. So here you are, you say print and in round brackets first, the value that I holds at that particular cycle, then uh, the individual element at that particular index in list one and followed by a dash, followed by the individual element at that particular index in list two. So when you run this now, the index is zero. In list one, the value is DNA. At zero index in list two, the value is replication at zero index. So they now come together separated by a dash. Likewise, in the next cycle, the value of i is one. And the value of uh, list one at index one is RNA. And list two at index one is transcription. Likewise, the next time the value of i is two. And at index two in list one, you have protein. And at index two in list two, you have translation. So here you are, the, you have basically printed the corresponding elements of the two lists together. So now let's say you want to combine the two lists together into a new list. And uh, for that, first you declare a new list as an empty list. So let's say we say central underscore dogma equals two. And you basically open a square bracket and close the square bracket. That means that we have declared a list, but the, there are no elements in the list as of now, right? So this is an empty list that you've declared. Let's also give more biological names to our uh, list that we're using here. So let's say molecule equals two, and then uh, in square brackets, DNA, RNA, and protein, each in double quotes. So these are your uh, first list. So the second list is process, and process equals two, again, uh, replication, transcription, and translation. And now what you want to do is to, you want to combine the elements of molecule and process together 
in the actual biological context. So you want DNA, and then what you want is that replication to come next. Then you next you want RNA, and then you want transcription to come next, and then you want protein, and you want the translation to come next. So keeping the biological significance of the processes together, so DNA replicates, and then of course DNA can transcribe into RNA, and RNA can translate into a protein. So we are going to populate our central dogma list by elements in molecule and elements in process using the append function. So append is going to add elements to a pre-existing list at the end. So here you are, you again run a loop, you say for i in range and uh, you define your numerical range as three, which means that i is going to have values of zero, one, and two. Then you Within the loop, you see the indentation here. So within the loop, you say uh, central underscore dogma dot append. So you are adding elements to the central dogma list, which is initially empty. And you, what are you adding here? First, you are adding the elements from the molecule list. And the molecule list element that you're adding is molecule and I, which is going to be, initially it is going to be DNA, because I, the value of I will be zero in the first cycle. And then again, once you've added this, you are adding another element to the central dogma list by saying central dogma, central underscore dogma dot append. And then you are adding the element from the process list. And again, initially the value of i is zero. So replication is going to be the second element in your list now. Then you move on, the value of i becomes one. And again, when you come to this uh, append, now you are basically going to add your RNA at the, as the third element in the list. Right? And then, of course, you are going to add transcription as the fourth element of the list. And then, uh, again, the value of 5 becomes 2. And when it becomes 2, you now add a protein. And then, next to it, you add the translation. So, the loop is going to run three times. The value of i is going to be 0, 1, and 2. And accordingly, elements from the molecule list and the process list will be appended on to the central dogma list here, right? So, so to see how our central list keeps growing at every cycle, we print uh, the value of i and the central dogma list after each cycle, right? So this will be printed thrice over and we'll see progressively how the values in central dogma list get populated. And then of course, after the loop is done, you come out of the loop. So now if you see this print statement is not indented within the for statement. So this is now outside the loop. So here we are, we say print and first we print uh, end of prime character so that you have uh, an empty line in between. And then you print the final value that is coming in your central dogma list here. Right? Let's run this. Here you are. So when you run this, this is what you get. So after the finishing of zero cycle, the central dogma has these values of DNA and replication, uh, which has come through the append command here, right? Then after the first cycle, you have DNA replication, and now you also have the addition of RNA and transcription. And then in the second cycle, you have DNA replication, RNA transcription, and also protein and translation. So this finishes your final list. Uh, after three iterations of the loop, you have the final list here. This is the final list. You have DNA, the process is replication. You have RNA, the process by which RNA is made is transcription. And the, you have protein, the process by which protein is made is translation. So this is basically a demonstration of how you can combine two lists together in a certain order, which has a biological sense. So we stop here. And now is the difficult part. Uh, I'm very poor at asking people to like and subscribe and share. But still, uh, this is a requirement. I want to grow from 25,000 views to at least a million views in one month. And if you think I deserve to be, uh, be liked and commented and also shared, please do so, right? Thank you very much. If you're benefiting from the lectures, this is also your obligation to ensure that I also benefit too. Thank you very much. Take care and stay safe.